And this is the advance and the reverse. Green is advance, red is back. Perfect, yes, sir. perfect, 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 perfect. So uh, how many of you, uh, just by show of hands, work with a dentist right now for all of your teams? A few, right, a few. So it's an important part of it, and uh, because of the injury factors, I'm going to talk about different things today, and I'm going to go through it. I know I have about 45 minutes, and really, I've done this lecture before, and um, not uh, for other groups, and this is actually an, a lecture that I can really go into some deep detail, so I'm going to kind of go over it, <clears throat> and be, feel free to call me, ask me some questions later. But I go from everything from uh, traumatic injuries to how to manage those, how to prevent those, and then going into other things that, that uh, are real, real important as far as it comes into sleep, sleep dentistry, uh, sleep medicine, uh, performance, uh, the enhancement and, and uh, uh, performance through, through different things that we can do from a dental standpoint. So I started way, way, way back. This is my son. I've, I've been, I played ball when I was younger. I played baseball and uh, ran track. And um, I was a high jumper. My son went on to be a better high jumper than I was ever. But I, so I've always been involved with sports, uh, thanks to Sports Medicine Group. Got to throw out the first pitch at the missions. I've been with uh, the team dentist with San Antonio Missions for probably the last 25 years, as well as the, as well as the Spurs. And so I, uh, I've gotten to learn a lot. The Rampage, obviously, was, <clears throat> was my biggest uh, group of people that were involved in, in, some, in traumatic injuries. And so basketball, probably the second. But many of you would think, oh, a dentist, what's a dentist going to do? Well, this is your first impression of a dentist. You know, you're, oh, I don't want to go to the dentist. They're just like needles and, and pain. And look at this, the dentist. Oh, my God, it's just all these, these sharp things. We go back historically, back in the days of, uh, of the early days of the fear that was put in by dentists. And even Dr. Seuss, I mean, they're even relaying this to the children. And I love this one of Elmer Fudd and Bugs Bunny. You know, they show his front tooth missing, but then you can see how important it is because they actually show a molar that's coming out. So it's not the front tooth. So, and poor Superman, even Superman, he's involved in, in dentistry, you know. And uh, this one was a great one. It was a, uh, the movie called The Marathon Man. Of course, they're just showing all the, the, the horrible things in dentistry, but um, I think, I think, uh, Dentistry in itself has been such a, has gone leaps and bounds as to what we can do to provide to help trainers to help uh, teams in uh, uh, taking care of, of traumatic injuries as well as things that you know I don't know I haven't met very many people that have gone from young child in sports to the NBA or something like that I, I, it's it's far and few between but. Dental injuries that occur at a, in a young age live with you for the rest of your life. And so if we can do something to prevent that and to treat that and to take care of that, you're actually saving somebody thousands and thousands and thousands and of dollars and misery over a lifetime. So why do we need dentists as part of the sports team? Well, because there are a lot of injuries. And I've seen the gamut of injuries over the years. Um, so the main, like I said, hockey, when I was with the Rampage, because we've been, I was with the Rampage since the, the inception, um, we've seen terrible injuries like this. This is one of our Rampage players that was up in, in Round Rock playing up there, and uh, he fell back onto the ground, and our enforcer pushed one of the other guys, and he went back and, with his skate, landed on his face. And so, uh, you know, he was upset because... He got cut really badly, but he couldn't have had a better injury when it came to this because two inches higher, he would have lost his eye, his eye. Three inches lower, he would have cut his neck. And so he was able to be sewn up. He's done really, really well. And he has just a little bit where he, when you can flare your nose, it's hard for him to flare his nose on the, on the left side. There's a, a little muscle that, um, that's, that, causes you to flare your nose, and that was severed, the nerve was severed to that. I actually saw this happen, this was at the World Cup, and uh, the Netherlands were playing, and I saw this happen on TV, and then about maybe, God, probably 20 minutes later, I pulled up Reuters, and they had already shown this, and I thought, boy, this guy, I hope he had a mouth guard. And uh, of course, other injuries, you know, elbows in soccer, soccer is probably one of the other biggest things that we can see, as you can imagine, 
the, you don't think that a soccer ball going that fast is, is going to create some dental trauma, but it can. Elbows are the, the, the other thing coming up with basketball. We see this a lot, plus traumatic injury is falling to the floor. And uh, just, you know, where you get, oh, you got to, <laughs> I thought that was a dog for a second. <laughs> I was like, all right, so, but we have traumatic injuries to the face and, uh, and even children, you know, um, so this um, high, fat, high inside fastballs are the ones that are uh, the ones to me. This is Ricky Henderson, one of my favorite players over the years. And of course, this was a student from UTSA that they called, trainer called me and said he took a high inside fastball. And if you can notice his lower teeth don't look like they're very straight, do they? And so this is what I saw when I pulled his lip back. And um, he got partial avulsion of, and fracture, a lower fractured jaw. And so, uh, uh, probably the worst injury I've seen in something like this was one of our hockey players in practice of the rampage. His his visor came down. I don't know how it happened, but it went. He, they called me and they said, "Hey, he's he's in a lot of pain. He cut his lip." And I thought, "Oh well, all right. Well, let's see it, a cut lip." But what had happened was that he had degloved his entire lower lip below the the the, the, the symphysis of his jaw. The shield came down and just somehow just went and just degloved the entire part of the face. And uh, those are serious, serious injuries because without that, you can get just, you know, when you sever those nerves down there, you, you don't have much room. You'll, you'll will never be able to have movement of his lower lip. But we were able, thank God, I called one of the surgeons that I work with. We got him in right away. We were able to reattach everything and use compression and he's doing great now. But so baseball pitchers is the other thing that I see. You know, they're, they're, and you've seen the videos where a, a pitcher is just a line drive right back to the pitcher. Facial injuries are very, very common. Again, bad hops and short stops. You know, you, you're playing on a bad field, especially if you're dealing with really young children, or in some of the fields that we play in. You know, especially in South Texas, where you get a bunch of the of the grass and everything. You get rain and dry, and then so it's not very even. Not, I'm not talking about the, the professional parks, but more so the high school parks and, that, and, uh, and the younger uh, uh, parks that we see where younger children are playing. Bad fields, bad bounce right into the face. So uh, the other thing I've worked on, I've worked with Dr. Uh, Dr. Sines on this, is with boxing. You know, we, we all see people that wear mouth guards in boxing. You know, some wear them, some don't wear them very well. So I'll give you a little bit of... You, this is just basic. You can look this up on the internet. This is just a basic anatomy of teeth, right? And uh, we have an outer enamel, dentin, which actually is where the where you feel dentin is that has nerve fibers, and then you have the pulp, which is the nourishment to the tooth. And I always say it's kind of like the ink on the pen. The the pulp is just the, the ink inside the tooth. And then, of course, uh, that's why that in the canal that goes down that root is called the root canal. So that makes sense. So root canals are, are is, uh, some of our best friends when we're coming into traumatic injuries. And then, of course, the, the entire stomato system, the mouth and the TMJ and the jaw and all the, all the facial muscles, all the nerves. So this is just, just to show you that there's a lot of this involved. The main area that I, I focus on a lot of it is on the TMJ right in there, the temporomandibular joint. Because there's some things we can do to prevent injuries to the joint, and there's other injuries that, that occur because of the joint. And so what can happen? Simple lip laps, lacerations, you know, you, they get, get popped in the mouth. Um, um, you, you, you go in there and you, we, can, we can suture those up. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, sometimes through and through, where you actually pierce through, the teeth actually pierce through. And so there is a, an, a, a joining from the, from the outside to the inside. Uh, depends if it happens on the heart tissue or it happens what's called the vermilion border, which is the wet part of your lip that just goes to the inside. It depends on where, and that's the different type of sutures that you use from the outside versus the inside. Um, these, are, these are just simple things that we see on a day-to-day -day basis, especially in basketball and elbow uh, and, and in hockey even, so we see that a lot in hockey. And then fractured teeth. Uh, you know, fractured teeth is probably the, uh, if you see a fractured tooth like this and you don't see the tooth, but you also see a lip injury, one of the first things a dentist does is we take a, an x-ray of the lip because sometimes the tooth could be embedded 
in the lip. And you don't see it, but it could be embedded. So one of the things that you can do as a trainer is take your thumb and finger and just kind of rub it, just kind of gently go into the wound with a, because uh, if they get traumatic injury, it's pretty almost kind of numb. And just feel, if you feel something hard, you might suspect that that piece of tooth is there, okay? Now, if you find the tooth, and we'll talk about it a little bit, is don't throw it away. Don't throw any pieces away. We can bond stuff back, okay? The other thing is complete avulsion, where they get hit and the whole tooth is lost. Find the tooth, find the piece if you can, and then we'll talk about the solutions that you can put it in for that. <clears throat> and then previous dental work, this is, all of these are patients of mine that I have seen, where they had dental work done and then they got hit and lost those pieces. So, so the, one of the first things that I think of is when somebody breaks a tooth is aspiration of the piece of tooth into the lungs, because that can cause a tremendous infection and so those <clears throat> have to be treated on an acute basis, right? If they're breathing fine, then you don't have to worry about it. But they have, oh, here we are. Got a little mic. Now we're going. Now we're going. Test one, two. No. Test, test, yes. You can, yeah, you can hear me now. Right. Awesome. So, yay, thank you. So possible aspirations of the teeth or teeth fragments, right? But always remember the ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. So uh, dentist, dental, dental injuries play second banana to airway problems, somebody who's got something going on. And at the Rampage, we always had a crash cart for laryngeal injuries. Somebody gets a skate through the throat, somebody gets a trauma through the throat. You know, yeah, they broke their teeth, but you know what? We need to make sure that they can breathe first. So we, we treat that first, then we take care of the dental injuries afterwards. So what else can happen? Fracture. This is the most other common thing that I see. It's very subtle. Sometimes you don't even notice it, and I'll show you a picture of that. But the, we see all of these different ones from fracture of the maxilla, fracture of the midface, and then fracture of the supraorbital super orbit area. So, this was one of our Rampage players that caught a puck right to the face. In fact, Dr. Palomera, he and I were sitting in a booth. We had just gotten our hot dogs <clears throat> and uh, we were about to sit and eat. And uh, we saw the, a puck fly and hit the helmet of one of the other team and ricochet right into his face. And it hit him straight square in the face and we both had our hot dogs in our hand and we just stopped and he fell to the, to, the, to the ice, and then just blood just started going out. And I, I thought, man, this has got to be traumatic injury to throw. Didn't know what it, we didn't know what it was. So Dr. Palomar and I obviously left the hot dogs, ran down to the ice, got up there. Uh, you know, there's blood everywhere, so you have to assess what's going on. He was having a little bit of trouble breathing, so we wanted to make sure that we, we maintained his patent airway and found out that he had been hit mid-face and ruptured the maxillary artery. And, and so that, between that and the nose, he, he, he bled quite a bit. You can bleed pretty quick, but pressure, again, that's, that's one of the things that you do. Plus, we also use uh, these little, uh, called rhino rockets. They're, uh, they're, the, the rhino rocket is like, a, it's like a tampon, and you can put that up into the nose. Uh, I would recommend that you use a little bit of Vaseline when you do that, and uh, you can also use Afrin if you have Afrin and just squirt the, the Rhino Rocket and then place it into the nose and that, that Afrin does constrict the blood vessels and keeps the bleeding down. But you also, also have to make sure that if you have that type of injury, that blood going back through the back side of the throat. So you have to just be aware, aware of that and making sure that you have airway. <coughs> Uh, this was uh, one of my patients uh, caught an elbow playing basketball and I don't know if you can see that but on this side uh, where it says RAF that he got an elbow and fractured his uh, maxilla you can see the little fracture lines there so and then here also you can see that it went into the floor of the orbit and that's how a lot of times you'll see that as a blowout fracture and then the eye will depress will come down so you have to be one of the things that we look, I know y'all are looking on concussion, right? And you're looking, look at me in the eyes and you're, and you're trying to do your concussive uh, um, 
assessment, when you look at that, make sure you see that the eyes are not drooped, you know, that they're, they're pretty even. And uh, that's another sign. Of course, the, the most popular fracture usually that I see is the fracture to the mandible right at the, at the corner. And uh, that's because we have a wisdom tooth sometimes that's there in, the, in, the, in this age group. And since there's no bone in there, the wisdom tooth is there. there that's, the, that's a weak point. So if you see that, if you see somebody come in, oh, my jaw is killing me, and you can suspect that maybe there's a fracture there. And how else do we know this? So I look at the TMJ. I look at the, where the wisdom tooth is. I look at the synthesis in the middle. And then I also look up into the into the, the nose, right? So I look to make sure that all those areas are, are, are well. This is one of our Rampage players that came in and uh, he had gotten hit uh, in a fight on here, right up in the, on the face. And they, they were saying, well, the trainer was like, well, can we get him back into the game? Can we get him back into the game? Uh, because we play tomorrow. And I said, well, let me take a look. So we took an x-ray because he was complaining that he had his teeth were bothering him in that area. So we took an x-ray, and as you can see where that arrow is pointing, there's a line that kind of goes across there. And that was actually a fracture. It was a, not, not a through and through fracture, but it was, it was definitely a fracture. If he had played again and got hit again, that could have completely fractured. So we, we obviously said no, 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 no playing for at least four weeks, and then he's got to wear a cage mouth guard. Uh, to make sure of that. But it can be very subtle. If I hadn't taken that x-ray, I was moving the teeth, and they all felt nice and firm, and it is, but there was actually a fracture available there. So, the best, the best medicine in, in anything that we do from a dental standpoint is prevention, right? Is that's, that's what we're, we're looking for. So, there's different types of, of prevention, and uh, so, you know, we go through our, our uh, helmets, mouth guards, uh, you notice that this mouth, mouth guard is attached to the helmet and that's so that they don't lose their mouth guard. It has nothing to do with protection of the teeth. In fact, it's one of the worst things that, in my opinion, it's one of the worst things that you can do is tie on a mouth guard to a helmet. Because I had one that was done, uh, it was from, um, I believe it was from Edison High School a few years ago before Mark was there. and. Uh, <coughs> The young man got hit. His helmet went this way. His that attach the, the attachment was on this, and the mouth guard was still in place, and ripped out several teeth, and tweaked his temporomandibular joint. <coughs> and uh, I'm not a big fan of this. So if you have any of your players that are doing this, I would really look to go more into some more of the custom type of mouth guards, and I'll show you those in a bit. Again. Softball, you know, they're, those, those, have you ever tried to hit a softball? Somebody pitching like, I have. Um, they come back like this. Like, I, thought it, I thought a fastball was fast, but no. <laughs> they're so much closer to you, and they go really fast. And trust me, I thought I had my life in my hands right there. But cages are important, especially at that level. Uh, we see this everywhere from top baseball to professional hockey, you know, college students, college hockey, they have, they're man, mandated to wear a cage. So um, this we see in uh, some of the fielders that can use this. But then the most thing are the, uh, the type of mouth guards. This is the most common, the boil and bite with the strap. I think it's the worst ones. It's maybe good for somebody that's transitioning, some teeth are missing and coming in. But this is the, if you had to do a scale, this is the bottom of the scale, okay? This is the most common because they're cheap and they're out there, but most of the time I find them on the, on the ground. Yeah, they, they just don't fit well, right? And then they harbor, as you chew, and you know, God knows that high school and young athletes are not the best at hygiene, and they chew through these things. It's a, it breeds bacteria, something incredible. We've actually gone and cultured these and it comes up with some nasty stuff. So uh, this is one called a shock dock, which it is better. It's a boil and bite also, <clears throat> but um, they're pretty expensive, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, and they're, they're, they're of the better kind. They're a little bit higher up the ladder. You can probably find them. Most Academy has, and most of the sports stores have these digs and stuff. But, um, but these are called shock docks. They're boil and bite also. 
But to me, the best one is the is the custom fit. And so you can have what's called that you can have a vacuum formed one or a pressure formed one. And your dentist can that you work with can can probably do either one of those. They're made out of a plastic, a, a polyvinyl plastic, which is the same plastic that you see in glue guns. And so I make mine a little differently. I take a bead of glue and I go across the, the, the tips of the teeth and then we uh, suck down the, the uh, plastic on top of that. So uh, this is uh, always one, one for the Blue Devils. And, um, and then this is one that they, they come in all kinds of different things, fangs, you know, like you're really gonna intimidate the player because you have a mouth guard with fangs, but you know, hey, you may. And so, uh, and then I also go in, when I do an insertion, I don't just make it. When I do the insertion, I actually go in with a, a torch and I flame the, not in the mouth, I flame it outside the mouth. I put it in and I have them just gently bite into it. And then it makes a little flat cut platform and then I, I go back in and polish it and adjust it so that they, with the, when they come closing down, they close down evenly. So you see them just kind of undulating that, you probably want to get those adjusted. <clears throat> Most dentists will know how to do that. The other one are the, the, the real specialty ones, like Under Armour has some. And uh, again, they're a custom fit made by Under Armour. And then some people say, well, how do we do it? My, you know, my son or my daughter is, is in uh, braces. What do we do? Well, I've actually made them for children with braces. Uh, if they're in active braces, the, you have to change it out a little bit more periodically. You know, you have to get it you, you, they're going through with braces right away when they're actively moving. If you use a, a real custom, custom mouth guard, uh, it won't allow the teeth to move. So we want the teeth to move. So we'll go back in and uh, in the technique here with the braces, we put in the model, we put wax to kind of block out those areas. So it still allows a little bit of movement of the teeth, but you can use it with this. <clears throat> I, I was coaching and my son in eighth grade baseball and the pitcher took a line drive to the face, but he had his braces on. And thank God, because it actually saved the teeth. It saved the teeth and uh, uh, they were from different teams, but ultimately he and my son ended up going to Central Catholic High School together and it, it saved his teeth and he, the, the braces just kind of doing that. But unfortunately, this is how most people wear their mouth guards. They, they, because if they're not custom fit, you're gonna see this. This is one of our own. This, uh, one of our Rampage players, and I said, you got to let me take a picture of how you wear your mouth right. This is the way he would skate. He would skate with this just sticking in his mouth. And he never wore it right. So it's not going to do him much, much good. So, so there's several types of, of injuries to the tooth, to the two teeth, but the tooth in general. And uh, simple fractures. And simple fractures can actually be restored pretty easily with some composite resin. So uh, this, is, this is something that I did, you know, get, get hit by the mouth and then I can go back and composite resin. If you have the piece of tooth, I can bond the piece of tooth back. And so there are ways we have really eighth generation composite resins and adhesives that will allow us to take any little fragment and put it back together. And it, so when in doubt, save the fragments and I'll show you how to do that. Then there's one, and I didn't, ha I haven't, didn't have any pictures of this, but uh, this is where you have a tooth fracture, but ex exposing the pulp, the nerve of the tooth, okay? <coughs> These can be pretty painful, okay? Uh, especially um, it, in a young child, because the pulps are very, very big in a young child. You remember when you were a kid, you'd eat an ice cream cone and you'd get, oh, your teeth would get like really cold, you know, in the front. That's because your pulps are really large versus somebody who in their senior years who their pulps are very, very narrow. And so uh, not as much sensitivity on, on those. <clears throat> a lot of times you'll have to do root canals on these treatments, depending on how long that exposure has been. Uh, if it's within a few minutes, within like 30 minutes or an hour, a lot of times you can just medicate it and, um, and close that up and do composite resin on top of it and they usually do fine. You want to make sure that the, the dentist will want to make sure that the tip of that root is closed. When your your child's root is, uh, even a teenager's root, some of them are open at the tip. And so we want those to close on the tip of the root up in the bone. <clears throat> so if 
and you've heard this before, I'm sure it's just a, a repeat, uh, but um, if something comes out, you immediately put, you keep the fragment or the tooth itself moist. You don't touch the root because the root has little fibers, the periodontal ligaments. They're little fibers that attach to the bone. So the bone has fibers, the root has fibers, and they hold each other. That's what holds it. So the, the, the tooth actually is kind of like in a little trampoline. It'll, it'll bounce. You can move your tooth a little bit if you feel it. I, like, I can feel my teeth moving a little bit. And that's because they're not fused to the bone. They are just in a ligament, a periodontal ligament that supports that around there. So you don't handle the root because if you do, you destroy the, that ligament. And then the reimplantation, if you're trying to put the root back in the tooth, in, in the socket, I should say, uh, it won't reimplant. So don't touch the root. Touch it by the crown of the tooth, the enamel part that you, that you normally see on a person. And then uh, we use Hank's uh, solution. It's called Save a Tooth, but uh, this Hank's balanced salt solution is uh, different salts in an aqueous form with uh, <clears throat> glucose in it. And um, there are some studies that show that this works very, very well uh, as keeping the health of the periodontal ligament the, of the tooth that's fractured. I mean, or that's evolves, as well as milk. So milk almost works as well. I sometimes, I, they come to me with a bottle of water and the parent and say, here I've got the tooth that's suspend, suspended in water. Anything that keeps it moist, we don't want it dry. And time is of the essence. I had some lady called me, it was about, a, well, it was over Christmas holidays that her daughter was playing basketball and her daughter got her tooth knocked out. And I said, well, I can meet you at the office. And she says, well, she's playing another game right now. And I said, well, is it a, is it a baby tooth or is it a permanent? And I looked at her front, her front tooth and I was like, when did this happen? Oh, it happened like a game of, they were in a tournament. So she goes, it happened like two games ago. And I was like, that's not gonna work. Because you have about 60 minutes to 90 minutes to get that tooth back in. And that's the, the more, the, the less time, the better. The longer, the worse. So after she had already been with that tooth out of her mouth for like three hours, I was like, it, it's not going to go back in. We can try, but it's not going to go back in. And then I, and, and it wasn't important to them. She said, oh no, she's playing a game. It's a real important game that she's got to be in. And I'm thinking, unless she's going to go on to the, to the, to the w, WNBA, she's got a problem for the rest of her life. And so... It's, it's kind of sad because the mentality sometimes of parents, as you know, that you've dealt with, uh, is a lot different than with the realities of what you can do to save tooth. Simple fractures like this, uh, I actually had the, the trainer sent me the, the piece of tooth and I bonded it back. You can't even see. It just bonds perfectly. It can go from something like that to that with just the piece of tooth. So we can do magic with that. Uh, the other type of thing is displacement. You see that a lot more in, in, uh, uh, in basketball. Uh, they fall to the floor, hit their face. Usually it's a blunt injury. The, the telltale sign of that is bleeding around the gums. You'll see a little bit of blood around the gums. That usually says that when it was pushed, the ligament tore. So one of the things that you do uh, is and this is the, the picture on the right is where is from a drawing that I did for an, an article that we that Dr. Uh, Stevens and Dr. Young and I wrote together <coughs> on traumatic injuries. And um, you make sure that they can put their teeth together. If they're saying, ah, I can't get my, I'm hitting, I'm hitting my front teeth. If they don't go in, then as a trainer, you can gently put your thumb and finger on. You put your finger up on the palate. Grab the outside, don't grab the tooth, but grab the, the top of the tooth, right at the top of the gum, and gently see if you can pull. And sometimes you'll hear a click, and it's back in its, in, in its position. Um, that will usually do well. I do that if it's hockey, oh my God, all the time. They come in and my tooth, and I just sit there and go, hold on. And it just pops right back in, and you get in position. <clears throat> gentle force, not hard force, just gentle force usually will go in. If not, when in doubt, don't do anything. This was actually a, a hockey injury. And then uh, baby teeth, it says there, I think you can see it. Well, it doesn't, you can't see the top of the screen, but it says baby teeth uh, should not be reimplanted. 
So if you have a child who has a baby tooth got knocked out, you don't, um, you don't put those back in. Baby teeth stay out, okay? So you just have to assess whether it was a baby tooth or a permanent tooth. Permanent teeth, yes, go back in. Baby teeth, don't go back in, okay? <clears throat> because baby teeth, when you put baby teeth back in, if they successfully go back in, they ankylose, which means they actually bond to the bone. They actually get become one with the bone. And then that impedes or hurts the eruption of the natural tooth coming in behind it. So baby teeth don't get reimplanted. So when in doubt, give me a call. Call your dentist. Get, make sure you find somebody that you can work with. <clears throat> well, the next thing I do when, when somebody comes in into the training room is that I examine for fractures. Okay? Uh, if, if I suspect an injury to the synthesis when they get hit in the chin, if they get hit in the chin, you have to think chin, joint because the force here goes back up into the joint, okay? So we have to make sure that we check the joint. And then, because you can have, I've had people where they fell, hit their chin and have bilateral condylar fracture. They, they break their, their, their condyle, they fracture. It may be through and through, it may be partial, maybe one side, maybe both sides. And so one of the things on the synthesis is I gently put my fingers in and I pull to see do they, does that elicit a response, pain or whatever? Or I see FTC movement, right? So really, it's the tooth alignment. You want to see the teeth alignment, right? And so we look into the jaw. We look at, is everything leaning up? Is everything straight? Not everybody has straight teeth. But does it look like it fits? You ask the question, do your teeth feel like they all come together? And you say, yes. Can you tap lightly? Does everything seem like it's hitting at the same time? Yes then you're probably good. If they go, no, I'm hitting really heavy on the left side, and they got hit in the chin, and they say, I've been hitting so hard on the left side, it hurts here. You suspect a condylar fracture on that side. Because what happens, here's a joint. If it breaks, the muscle's gonna pull it up. You have the temporalis muscle works here, along with your masseter and your medial pterygoid muscle. Those are your muscles of closing, right? And so those are the ones you can clench on. And if you fracture this, attached to that condyle and the coronoid process is the temporalis muscle. And it's gonna contract and pull it up. Now they're hitting harder, okay? If there's a complete fracture, all right? So we look for that. If you see something like this, you have to suspect fracture or um, maybe a little bit of subluxation of the joint. So the joint is out of the glenoid fossa. Glenoid fossa you find in the shoulder, but it's also called in the joint up in the, in the ear, the TM joint, it's called the glenoid fossa. So that is out, so you suspect something like this. And so check the inside, and then let's say they, they're open, they, they're, they're subluxated, their, their whole joint has come forward, and, and the, now the lateral pterygoid muscles have pulled and they pull the joint forward, now you have an open body, they go, I can't close, I can't close. Make sure that the joint is healthy. Don't never put your thumbs on the top of the teeth to see if you can reduce it. If you do and they snap closed, you probably lost your thumbs. So we know how important thumbs are. So you put your hands, your thumb on the outside and then work pushing down and back. And usually you can get the joint down and then get it back into the worst case scenario, call the dentist, work with the surgeon or uh, one of the facial people there. So mouth guards also are, uh, can, can help in concussions. There's no uh, empirical evidence of that, uh, that we're still working on peer reviewing a lot of articles on that. Um, but the reason behind that is by putting in a, uh, a mouth guard, you're, you're actually moving the jaw joint instead of touching the glenoid fossa, it's actually coming down a little bit because now you have something in between the teeth. And so, uh, but this type of injury here to the face, it can, you, so you can imagine if that mouth guard is attached to that helmet, right? And then of course, concussion. So you can do your assessment for concussions first and then uh, go on from there. Um, there's part of sports uh, performance is the ability to uh, having a mouth guard that help you give you a little bit extra strength. And I put this in there because you can notice that the, the guy that's lifting the weights, 
<clears throat> when you lift weights, you clench your teeth together, right? And if you can't clench your teeth together because you have a sore tooth, you can't lift as much as you can if you have healthy mouth. If you, if you have an off bite where the bites are not really fitting very well, then if you put a mouth guard in and create a perfect environment of a bite, you can actually gain strength. So uh, Under Armour came out with a study from the United States Army talking about these performance um, mouthwear. Uh, I didn't get involved with it because I just thought we had only had one peer-reviewed uh, study, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to wait till more information comes out. But because I can actually go in and I can make a device that is a, like a bite splint to make sure everything is even, and it's a lot cheaper. Uh, um, the, I believe to the entry fee into that uh, performance mouthwear for the dentist was about $1,200 just to get in the game. And then they still had to provide, they still had to pay for uh, the making the appliances. But I can make these, you know, that plastic there is 35 cents worth of plastic. A lot of knowledge to do this, but uh, it, it's still, it's a little bit more economical. The other thing I see, and especially in children and teenagers, <clears throat> that they think that, you know, this is a, a tough subject sometimes, but I'm very astute when it comes to seeing this in my office. I have diagnosed this on several times, is uh, young, young adults coming in having oral sex and uh, getting uh, HPV, the human papillomavirus. As you know, uh, there are certain strains of the human papillomavirus that can cause tonsillar cancer. And so uh, we want to prevent that. So you're having a frank talking, speaking to your, your young adults, if you're using young adults, is to talk about how important it is to uh, modify their, their, uh, their habits. And, uh, and, and this can, I've seen tremendous injuries from this. I've had several patients that have come down with tonsillar cancer. Not all tonsillar cancer is due to HPV, but most cancers from HPV are tonsillar cancer. So. You can also have cancer of the tongue, cancer of the palate, cancer of the esophagus, and so they can all be caused by HPV. So there's a huge, this, this, uh, this article was in 2017, and so it's, it's out there right now. So you just need to make sure that you counsel well your, your teams if, you, if, if you're allowed to do that. But it shows up usually as a little papilloma on the palate or on the tonsil. This is on the uvula. Um, oh, actually, this is on the tonsil area. I've actually seen it on the uvula. And I had one young, uh, young lady who was in my office, sport, played sports, and she complained of a sore throat. And so I said, well, say ah. I call it the Hawaii technique because, you know, if you say, say ah, people go ah, and they use their nose, and you can't see anything. So if you use, and I, my daughter's a physician in Dallas, and I taught her this, is to use, is to say ah in the lowest voice you can do it. So you go ah. When you do that, the tongue goes to the floor of the mouth, and you can see really far back. So I had a young lady, I said, say ah, she went, ah, and I, I couldn't see anything. And then I said, say ah again, really low. And so she did, and I finally got it, and I found a you know, papilloma hanging off of her uvula, the little bell that she had in the back. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so we sent her for biopsy. Thank God it came back, papilloma, but not, not carcinogenic. So she just, it was just an irritation to her. But still, those can be really, really bad. So the other thing that I, I, I'm a huge proponent of is uh, sleep disorder breathing. Uh, I, I treat a lot of it in my office. In fact, I'm transitioning my practice right now with my associate. And I'm going to be doing more of this, still doing some of the other part of the sports medicine, but, but doing this because to me, it, this is a huge um, uh, field that we, can, uh, that we can use as far as athletic performance and, and uh, just overall health. Um, uh, so sleep disordered breathing, uh, you've heard it as a uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Not everybody has obstructive sleep apnea. The common thing is snoring. And then uh, you can have what's called you are uh, upper airway resistance syndrome, where you just but you're still breathing. And then you could have obstruction sleep apnea. And people think, well, it's the soft palate going back. Well, it kind of is, but it's the tongue blocking the soft palate. So now you don't have good airway, right? So we'll remember ABC, airway, breathing, circulation. So if you don't have airway and breathing, 
your circulation is going to suck, not do very well. And so what we do is we work with different patients on improving their airway and improving their breathing. Um, if we breathe through our mouth, which you see a lot of athletes doing, you cause a sympathetic response, you know, the fight or flight syndrome, breathing through the mouth. If they breathe through their nose, it's a parasympathetic response, calming down. You've all been in situations where breathe through your nose, breathe through your nose, and you calm down, right? And so um, what, there's a lot of good things about nasal breathing. Uh, there's a lot of bad things about mouth breathing. And so when you see, you see uh, uh, things on television, you know, they're snoring, yeah, and they make light of it, but it's a serious problem, you know? Um, and so airway and breathing are the most important things that I can think of. Imagine you have a, a, a young child that comes in or a teenager that comes in like this and says, man, I, I'm just, I can't focus in school. I'm not doing well in my grades. Um, you know, what are, what's going on? And you sit there and they go, you look back into the, into the mouth and this is one of my patients and you see tonsils this big. That's, that's a sign of a breathing problem. And I had a young lady that came into my office uh, she was doing poorly in school. She had been uh, given medicine for attention deficit disorder and with hyperactivity. Uh, she couldn't focus. She couldn't do anything. I looked at her mouth, and I, and I, this is not her, but I saw something similar to this. And I, was, I told the mom, you need to get her to a pediatric ear, nose, and throat doc. So I sent her to one of my friends who's a P, P, uh, pediatric nose, uh, ENT. They did, she was on the Ritalin, mind you, okay? Took her in, they did tonsillectomy, adenoidectomy, and um, her, she went from a C student to an A student. She sleeps all night. I asked, first question I asked the mom, does she snore? Oh my God, she snores so badly. So this is something that you guys can, can be involved in and looking at. So here's that is, attention deficit disorder. A lot of things that we see in pediatrics 